What's going on, everybody? This is Fry. So today we are doing the final episode of the tier list of the classes of 2023. Yes, I know it's 2024. We're at the beginning here. Uh, I will also continue after this to do a, redo the hero tier list, superpower tier list, and stuff like that. Uh, especially the hero tier list. My opinions have changed a lot uh, over the last couple of years. <laughs> Countertron. Anyway, we're going to be going with... Uh, the sneaky tier list and starting off with Swabby, I'll going quickly through these cards. I'm going to be more basing it on how much you likely you should be putting it uh, a card in a deck. Um, if it has like a, <laughs> uh, instead of necessarily how powerful they are. Swabby is a very not powerful card. Uh, you typically don't want to be running Swabby. You can run it, let's say, with Bad Moon Rising. It's usually going to be worse uh, than Brain Vendor in that deck. Uh, the only real viability of Swabby as a card being a zero cost one one is in a tell imps deck if you want a very quick way like a very cheap way of teleporting in a deadly imp but even then it's usually a lot worse than imposter and neutron imp and stuff like that put it in d tier because it does have uses but uh very treasure is a very good card now uh it works very well in ram decks with nebula you can play it into nebula which will give two extra brains and then because it's fusion you can play another card in the nebula that turn it also conjure, uh, conjures works very well with space time uh, it also is sort of like a ramp card because you're investing this one brain early and then you're getting a legendary that costs one less. So you think of it as an early investment for a later turn, making it sort of a ramp card. It's good. Very treasure the good card. It's not super reliable. Uh, I'm going to put it... Ooh, this is tough. I'm going to put it in B tier. Next, we're going to go with Ducky Tube Zombie. Ducky Tube Zombie, I'm putting in F tier. I do not know the use of this. Uh, again, the reason it's bad is because it starts off as a 1 1, so it dies, loses a trade to anything. Uh, you know, Lima Floridon, I love punishing Ducky Tubes with that. The Sting Bean, even. And uh, even if it does, uh, you know, start hitting face and growing the block, it's going to be pinging, giving your opponent all these little block charges, one damage and then two. And usually the fact that they're getting superpowers just makes it not worth it. Um, this also, when this procs the block, it doesn't grow. It has so many problems. I think if this card had Bullseye, it would be good. Uh, graveyard is a decent card. The main time you're using Graveyard is in a Cowboy deck. In Graveyard Cowboy, you play the Graveyard in lane 2. You can play a Cowboy into it to make sure the Cowboy will be you know, protected against everything. So if Grave Removal, making the Cowboy pop out with 4 attack, uh, it's fine. Do we find other uses for Graveyard? Maybe in some of like, the Moth decks? Uh, you can play Graveyard on one and, you know, Space Ninja on turn two. It's not a great environment, and especially people running this in a deck with Headstone Carver that, that already has a lot of Gravestones. Uh, if the Gravestone, if just for the one extra attack, it's usually not worth it. If it's not going to be giving cards that are usually not Gravestone, it's carrying them into Gravestone. Unless it's doing that, uh, Graveyard's not worth it. It's an activator for Zombot that works. It works with Valkyrie. You can be Valkyrie in Graveyard. It pops out. It still has its attack, so... It's okay, I'll put it in C tier. This we got Headstone Carver. Headstone Carver is a card that, uh, back in set one, I thought it was like one of the best cards in the game, and then I sort of like just stopped using it, and really, as I think about it more, I think Headstone Carver is one of the best cards in the game. Uh, the fact it's a one cost one three makes it almost impossible to deal with on turn one, and it just gets insane value if you can play a Gravestone, even one Gravestone on turn two, let alone if it lives to play several Gravestones. Even later in games two, the fact it's buffing your other Gravestone cards makes it decent. Um, so we are going to put Headstone Carver in A tier. It is quite good. I would almost put it in S, but I think that uh, Gravestone and Pirate decks can go without Headstone Carver, especially like if it's Infinity, we don't run it. We run, you know, Con Man and Grave Robber. Uh, I think, though, just even for, especially for budget players, though, Headstone Carver and Gravestones, it's like your best bet for zombies. Uh, Imps F tier. And Imposter is uh, B tier. It's, it's, again, a decent card. Uh, the fact it's a card that gives you another card is very good. Um, you're mostly going to be using this, uh, let's say, in a sort of tell imp deck uh, or imp decks. Um, I wonder, it, it could be high C tier. Maybe I'll put it in high C tier because you're really, I don't know. In my opinion, it's not actually a strong one drop. You know, I'm always looking for Neptuna for extra one drops with Flag Zombie and Imposter is usually not it. The problem is you put it on the board and they just make a stronger play in a different lane and this doesn't die. Uh, so, you know, just playing it dry as a zombie on turn one. It's not great. I'll put it in C. Next is Mini Ninja. Mini Ninja, I think, should have a second health and then it would be good, but it's just too weak as a 1-1. One, one. 
it you know loses a trade if they put a card in front of it to anything. You could do a deck where you teleport these in and stuff, but uh, Mini Ninja, you shouldn't be really be looking. We also you, know, you can use it with Smoke Bomb. Every once in a while, Mini Ninja will be very good and will take over a game. Um, I, I'd say based on how much I use it, it'll be D, but I have seen people really get a lot of value of Mini Ninja running a lot of Smoke Bombs. Maybe it's a fluke, maybe it's not, but uh, I'll, I'll put it in low C tier. Uh, Smoke Bomb is a decent card, and I've really found that running two of these in a deck... And any kind of sneaky deck is never a bad thing. Just to be able to correct, you know, you have a bad train happening in the lane, and you're moving something and making it able to go to a lane where it has a good trait, or you're able to make it go hit face. Very useful uh, with any of your cards with anti-hero, with any of your cards that have abilities that, you know, grow or spawn an extra minion when they hit face, like Swashbuckler and uh, and uh, uh, Tomb Raider. Uh, having a couple of these, again, is never a bad thing. I would say, in general, the amount you're looking to run these in decks, I'll put it in, in like, high B tier, low A tier, because uh, you should... It, running. You never really want to run four, they're going to brick, but running a couple of these in a lot of decks is really good. Zombie Chicken, I'm putting in F tier. I've tried, you know, buffing it up with Sugary Treat and, you know, making it a hard minion then to take care of because it's moving around lanes. We've done it with uh, Hunting Grounds, with a Brain Freeze deck. Nothing really seems to ever make Zombie Chicken justified. It's just a one-cost 2-2 at the end of the day. And it's hard to kill, but why would they want to? Because it's only a 2-2. Next is Barrel Barrels. <laughs> the fact this card used to cost 1 is hilarious. Barrel Barrels is decent. It's good with uh, you know low attack, high health minions. Turns any trade into a winning, at least an equal trade. It's not a winning trade. Very good with teleportation zombie and with space time, especially because it conjures the barrel. Barrel is a pretty good class. Uh, everything from barrel barrels it has a couple bad cards like pot of silver, but it has uh, battle cruiser and it has uh, I don't know <laughs> what else is a barrel. Uh, barrel of dead beards, for example, which is a very good card. Um, I'm gonna say put this in B because I wouldn't say include this in most sneaky decks, but again, running a couple of these is always gonna be a good idea. Space Time is a very good card. Uh, it's a 2 cost 1 5, so it's like impossible to deal with, and you have to deal with it. Like, you have to front it. You play it on turn 2, play Laser Base Alpha on turn 3. It synergizes with every sing single Conjure card in the game, and it's, it itself is a big threat because if this is drawing new cards, it's ridiculous. Your opponent has to deal with Space Time. Um, I'm going to put an A tier because I think, again, Space Time, you can sneak two. Uh, probably most sneaky decks will be good, and some it will be very good. Obviously, it's a part of Conjure Leap. Um, space Time is A, and I'm still really looking... Honestly, I'm still looking for the competitive Space Time deck. Other than, like, Conjure Leap, which, again, I'm not going to consider a top tier. I'm not going to use Conjure Leap in a tournament. I want, I want to find... What I'm going to be setting out for, one of my goals in 2024, is to find a competitive deck that has a super sweaty competitive deck with Space Time in it. Uh, and that somehow the randomness that he has of conjures, obviously, both for himself and what he synergizes with, will not end up being an issue. Uh, again, we run it with Neptuna and Flag Conjure, which, again, is... <laughs> it's a Tier 2 deck, you know what I mean? I want to find a Tier 1 deck with Space Time. Conjure Leap's good, but it's also a Tier 2 deck, competitively. All right, Fire Rooster is a decent card, um... It's able to ping little 1-1s. Unfortunately, I think it's actually outclassed. Uh, Fire Rooster is a very similar card in its usage to Imp Turing him. Because think about it. You can either eliminate those little minions, those little one-health minions, with your Fire Rooster. Or you can put Imp Throwing Imp and utilize those minions to your advantage, throwing an Imp you know, to another uh, place in the field. Um, so if Fire Rooster was not... Outclass in the same class by him throwing him same cost again. It's played in front of something they've already played. Very similar usage card. Uh, it would probably be higher because of him throwing him. I'm gonna put it down in. I'm gonna put it in. I'm gonna put it in C. It would really be in B in terms of how useful it is. And every once in a while, Fire Rooster is like devastating. They play Forget Me Nuts, and you just play Fire Rooster and just wreck them. But uh, at the end of the day, there's not a ton of one health threats that you really uh, need to fire rooster as opposed to imp throwing imp works very well against a 2-2 two, two. fire rooster evenly trades against a 2-2 two, two. fishy imp is an okay card for budget uh, players if you're trying to do some aggressive and just put some amphibious minions I do sometimes run a couple of copy of these in you know budget pirate decks where you're just running headstone carver your basic cheap pirates flame face and 
Fishy Imp just adds a little bit of power. I would say because of its usefulness as a budget card, I'll put it in C tier. Uh, competitively, though, this will be low, low D or F uh, because it's not super... Uh, it's, it's outclassed, but I mean, Toxic Waste Imp is probably overall just a better card, and there's usually not a whole lot of excuses to run Fishy Imp, uh, unless you're a budget player, in which case, you know, it's a... This is a basic. This is one of the cards they give you when you unlock the sneaky class. So, gotta give that gotta give that some credit in the budget scene. Um, Frosty Mustache. Uh, we mostly have, I've tried using this in decks. Obviously, Freeze Pirates. We've mostly used this in like sort of as a meme card. Uh, for two cost, it's way too expensive. I know it does conjure you another thing, but the amount of tempo you're losing. Uh, spending two is not very good. I think at one, this card would be okay and not be overpowered. It could be like the new barrel barrels in the one slot. Um, we try using it with Cryo Yeti, which grows every time we freeze something. Uh, haven't really ever found it to be useful. I'm going to put it in high D tier, but I, honestly, I, maybe in 2024 we'll find a really good use for Frosty Mustache. I thus far have not found one. Hot Dog Imp, we call it Corv because of the Ikea uh, sausage. They sell the frozen sausage or whatever. Um, <laughs> it's a meme card. Two cost two two. You know, strike through is very interesting. We have tried making decks with this where you try to grow it. Uh, a two cost strike through minion is very interesting, and who knows? Maybe there's a really good deck. But usually, investing more cards into one card, especially because removal is so efficient in this game, is usually always a bad plan. That's the reason why Hot Dog Imp is not very good. Put it in deep. Ice Pirate um, is outclassed by the other two two-cost Gravestone Pirates in the Sneaky class, being Monkey Pirate and, of course, Swashbuckler. Uh, you know, Ice Pirate, it's very hard to be going for Graveyard on one, Ice Pirate on two. It looks like a nice play, but at the end of the day, unless they play a minion in the Graveyard, the Freeze doesn't really gain you any tempo. It can maybe save you a health from a Triceratop they play. Uh, typically, people aren't going to be feeding into a Gravestone. On turn two, also, if you play this into any environment on turn two, there's always, like, Spikeweed Sector, which is probably overall the most common plant environment, uh, will destroy both Ice Pirate and the, <laughs> and the environment. So it's just some technical problems in terms of what the plant side does. It makes Ice Pirate not as good. We've had limited success with this, you know, combining it again in a freeze deck. Um, this is good, maybe better with Black Hole, you know, Black Hole and One Ice Pirate on two with Neptuna, because then they at least, their minion has to end up in the environment. I'm pretty sure our Mop Tuna deck featured Ice Pirate. That was pretty good, but again, Spikeweed Sector, and really even just a 2-2, two, 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 I guess it will freeze it, so it'll win the trade. Maybe we can go back and make some Ice Pirate with uh, Black Hole and see, but... Uh, honestly, uh, I, I, I don't, I mean, it's better than the cards in D, so I'll, I'll put it in a low C tier. Imp Throwing Imp is a card that I discovered uh, in the tournament how good this was, particularly because it's very good into Guardian. That's very often spamming a uh, Forget Me Nuts on turn one, or, you know, Mega Grow is spamming a Click Bee on turn one. Very good to put this in front of it because this will not only trade with their one drops, but actually give you more value by putting things all over the field. A very important part of Tell Imps, too. Uh, I love running this with Neptuna, you Black Hole on one, and Imp Throwing Imp on turn two. And then if they play Spikeweed Sector, they're still giving you two Imps in other lanes. So, uh, very good meta card because of how strong Guardian is. Uh, I'm going to put an A tier because I think that's not only a really super important part of Tell Imps, but I think any deck is sneaky that it's controlling uh, should have him throwing imp in it. Uh, it's quite good. Monkey Smuggler is a very good card. Uh, you're going to be running this in almost every single pirate deck. 2 cost 2, 3, solid, and the fact you're stealing the fact it's a pirate and then you're stealing block meter is good. The fact it's a pet doesn't really matter. I've tried using this in pet decks. Not super effectually, but because um, you, the pirate pirates and the cards I typically include in pirate decks and also in the mid-sneaky decks, which is going to be Pogo, Yeti, and Mug, are going to be rated very high, because I do think those are the two main strategies for the sneaky class. And because it's such an important part of it, this could almost be an S-tier in terms of how much you run it, but uh, it's not absolutely necessary in Pirate decks. You could maybe go with something more like Ice Pirate, or if you have a different class like your Hardy, so then you can run Sumo instead of Monkey Smuggler. Uh, but it's, it's really good. Swashbuckler Zombie, I'm putting in S-tier. 
I think it's an extremely important part of every single pirate deck. Um, you have to be careful playing this into Juggernaut or Black IP. Obviously, on turn two, Headstone Carver does solve that problem. Also, just playing any one cost pirate to the left and playing Swashbuckler to the right solves that because that first unit will hit face and grow from the Swashbuckler. So even if this loses a trade, it'll leave value on the board. Very often, if you have one or two Swashbuckler zombies, if you've seen me play any pirate decks, they will just take over a game. If they don't answer this, it's all of a sudden a 3-3 and growing itself and everything else on the board every single time they hit face. It's especially good with flame face because your cards are damaging the plant hero directly because they will have strike through. Awesome card. Uh, Toxic Waste Imp is a decent card. Uh, it's a lot of value for a two drop. It dies very sadly to, you know, two damage. So, very blessed Banana Bomb. Uh, Lima Pluridon, very good answer to this card. But, uh, it's a very important part of Tell Imps. It's the main way you control using Tell Imps with Hugh Giganticus. Imp decks are not great. I would say the only Imp deck that's amazing is Tell Imps. All the other ones, they're just okay. Teleporting in a deadly minion, though, just means that you're able to, you know, destroy anything they play on the board for free, which is a ton of value. Um, this is either in low A or high B. Looking at the A tier cards, and because, again, I'm not going to go based on power. I'm going to go based on how much do you want to actually run this card in a deck. I would say it's basically only going to be super viable if you're against it, so I'm going to put it in B. Uh, but again, very solid card, and, you know, I'm, it, I wonder if there's a lot of other decks other than Telem's that Toxic Waste and could be good in. Back our Bounce is an extremely underrated card. The fact that for three costs you're able to remove anything off the field, it's a tempo play. You're obviously giving them card advantage, spending a card, giving them a card back into their hand. They don't lose a card off of this. Uh, but it's a really, really good quick answer to um, big minions. You know, if you're obviously, if they're spending something that costs a lot more than three, they're losing a lot of tempo. So it's a tempo card. Also, it's a tempo card in terms of if you have strong minions that need time to cook uh, by hitting your opponent's face or just by not being matched up with a stronger plant, this will quickly correct it for relatively very cheap. Three is a relatively cheap price to play for pay for a bounce. Um, and I think you can run a couple of these in a lot of decks, not just Trickster, but like a lot, a lot of decks. It's a little bit outclassed by Pogo. I'll get into that a little bit later. Um, but yeah, it's either like low A or high B. This is a very decent card. I'll put in like high B tier. It could be in low A though. Uh, Captain Flameface is easily an S tier, and if you are a budget player, I don't really know what the cycle of the event cards and when this comes around, so eventually you'll be able to get this for free, but honestly, I do suggest for budget players, if you want to actually craft the best uh, budget zombie deck right now, craft Captain Flameface, because Captain Flameface is the only event card that costs a thousand uh, to craft. It is the only... Um, it is the only expensive card in otherwise very budget decks with Headstone Carver, very cheap pirates, uh, and then you can just run whatever cheap gravestones and fishy and whatever you have. So I think this is a must craft. Making all your pirates strike through is just this is just so hard to deal with, and this card single handedly uh, uh, being added to the game, you know, back in the day really made pirates uh, viable as a class. So. Cosmic Imp is interesting. I, I really like Cosmic Imp because it's really like two deadly minions for the price of one. Every once in a while, this will just conjure. Whenever I play it, it conjures triplication, which is garbage, uh, which is an imp trick. Uh, but, you know, it's a little expensive at three. It's basically outclassed by Toxic Waste. And the fact it gives you another card is cool. I like the fact you can teleport this in in front of or play it in front of something and then have another deadly imp to teleport in later. Uh, it's hard to find an actual use for this, and I really would like to find more uses for Cosmic Imp. Maybe in Black Hole. So what do we have for the Black Hole deck? We got Ice Pirate and Cosmic Imp. <laughs> and Mop. Um, it's really hard to know where to put this. I, this gets a lot of value. I don't run it a lot. I'm going to give this the benefit of the doubt. I'm putting in low C tier, and uh, we'll see. Maybe we'll, we'll figure out how to, how to play Cosmic Imp. This really is a ton of value. This might be the best cosmic card. We just just haven't figured out exactly when and how. It would be low C, high D. 
Excavator is a good card. Uh, I like running this with, obviously, with uh, the main two environments you're synergizing this with. One is if you're Neptuna, you're using Black Hole, uh, which will always suck a, a plant into it, and then you pop it back out and play that Black Hole. It's a one-cost environment. Uh, the other really good environment is huge gigantic is superpower, the ice environment, which freezes something that you can pop out. You know, the ice environment gets a lot of value when played, and when you pop it out, then you can play that ice environment again, uh, creating strike in a different lane, but more importantly, even freezing that lane. Uh, Excavator is decent, also has pretty good stats for a three cost card. Like, 4 1 is not going to lose a trade, and it's like a heavy hitter. Like, if they don't front this, they're going to pay by taking four damage. Uh, and so obviously protecting them. If this wasn't a gravestone, it would be garbage. But uh, it's protecting the gravestone. The one health is less of a liability. It's it's not a lot of health, obviously. Uh, this is a very good card. I'm going to put it in B. Next, we got Ink Commander, uh, which, again, it's a very important part of Imp decks because it'll make you, you're playing all these chimp, cheap Imps. You're able to refresh your hands. Mostly going to be useful in um, Tell Imps when we run this, but... Other than that, I don't think it's even that good. And it's really not as good as Toxic Waste. I'm going to put it in C tier because I don't think Imp decks in general are very good. And again, I don't even know if you need necessarily to even run that many Imp Commanders uh, in Telems. I could put it in low B. I'm putting it in high C because I really just don't think it's as good as, as these cards. Layers of Base Alpha is an extremely good card. Uh, it is a very good finisher. The fact that it will make any minion in a deadly means they're always going to be, you know, winning trades and they're going to be hitting phase. So you can use this for small minions to trade up. The deadly is more important, but for big minions like Yeti, for example, um, Cryo Yeti is, this will be making them hit phase. This makes it a very viable finisher. You can run this in almost any running copies of this in almost any single sneaky deck. Uh, is a great idea, and for that reason, I'm actually going to put it in S tier. You can literally, I think, in Pirates, you can run this. You can run it in um, Pogietti Mug. You can run it in, you can run anything. You run a couple copies of this in any deck, and space time. You know, every single genre of of sneaky deck is com is unites with this one card, Laser Base Alpha. This is almost the going viral uh, of the sneaky class, in my opinion. It's outclassed with Brain Freeze. You'd rather run, you know. Area 22, which I think I put in S tier, I should have. And then with Hugh Giganticus, his ice environment, which is an overpower card, is obviously better. You don't have to run laser base alpha, but honestly, it's S tier. It's it's really, really good. Uh Lion Dancing Zombie is a really, really strong card. I do run this a lot in Pirates. It's three da it's three damage strike through, and it's a grave since again, the one health is not such a liability. This will hit phase, and it's strike through, so it's hitting team up plants, and it's doing, it can't really block it very easily, so I usually do three damage once, and again, its ability is also good, because it allows you, unlike almost every single gravestone zombie, you're able to play this in the lane you know you don't want it, and then it will move, you get to choose after which lane it's going to go to, which is amazing. Uh, this is an A tier card, easily, it could be probably be S tier, because this is... Uh, probably a good idea. I mean, do you run this in Pirates? Do you run this in Mid? Uh, honestly, Line Dancing Zombie might be S tier in terms of how often you can run this in a deck. Like, what deck, it, in which deck is Line Dancing Zombie not? You can use this as a control card. If you're running Pogo Yetting Mug, you can control with Line Dancing Zombie on turn three, and that's a fine idea. If you're going aggro, this is a good idea. This is great late in games. Like, this is a three cost card that is so powerful on turn six, combining it with something else because it's just always hitting face. Honestly, I didn't think coming into this tier list, the sneaky is going to have a lot of S tier in it. This might be SS tier for real. Uh, fun fact although PopCap employees were never. Um, supposed to talk to anybody about anything because of their non-disclosure agreement. Way back in the day, back in set one, one of the PopCap employees, who I will not name, but you're awesome, you know who you are if you watch this video, uh, told me that this, according to their statistics, Line Dancing Zombie had the highest win rate of any zombie card in the entire game back then, but I, I don't think anything has changed. I'm going to put it in S. Uh, Raiding Raptor is a very high potential card, which I feel like I, I run this sort of accompanied to other strategies, but I almost feel like we need to make the Raiding Raptor deck and make this even better 
uh, than it already is. This is a card that, if not addressed, will, it, first of all, three costs two, four. So it's so hard to kill on turn three. And then the next turn, it's growing by at least two attack making it a 4-4, four, four, and it'll just keep on growing. Every time you conjure a card, if this is phase, uh, on turn 4, it's going to be a 6-4, which is just stupid, stupid amount of stats. It's also giving you extra cards. Uh, this can be used as a finisher. I don't even think I fully, you know, realized the potential of Raiding Raptor. I'm usually just running this as a solid turn 3 play in some kind of tempo deck. Um, I did run this quite a bit in the tournament because... On turn four, I'm always worried about Shrinking Violet, and this just messes up Shrinking Violet big time. I most liked it more than Lion Dancing Zombie, because it will just keep on growing out of control. I mean, I don't really know where to put this. I, I it's You can run this in a lot of decks. It works with Space Time. Does it work with Pirates? It could be, okay. I'm going to put it in low A tier as a placeholder, and I don't, you know, who knows? Maybe this is an S tier card that I haven't. It's so much potential here. I gotta figure out Raiding Raptor this year. All right. Uh, Smelly Zombie is a tough card because, again, it's a control card that doesn't move. If this had Line Dancing's ability of moving, <laughs> that would be the best card in the game. Um, but it's really hard to pull off Smelly Zombie. I'm gonna be putting in C tier because, again, you're usually putting this in front of something they played the last turn. Uh, and it's not really doing anything until it pops out and it has to hit that minion. You know, you can put this in front of a Triceratops on turn two, which is one of the better matchups for Smelly Zombie. But again, they can put a team up in front of the Triceratops or something like that. Uh, it's usually not a whole lot of room for Smelly Zombie, but uh, who knows? Maybe there's, you know, you start combining it with Smoke Bomb and with Black Hole and other cards. I've tried. We had a deck. I've tried it literally two times on stream called the Smelly Black Hole. Uh, where you play Black Hole and you play Smelly Zombie into it, and then it should be this infinite control machine. And it just wasn't reliable because without the Black Hole, it was so bad by itself. I don't really know. This seems like this should be a much better card. Three costs two, four. It's a pet. But two, four, deadly. It seems like this should be so good. So we'll add it to the list of many cards that we want to figure out how to use this year. Uh, Space Pirate is very cool. I mean, it's like five, two for three costs. Uh, it's a little bit weak, again, not a gravestone. You know, that's why this two health is going to be very low compared to, you know, Line Dancing Zombie, uh, which is at least protected in her nice cozy grave. Uh, the fact this dies to anything with two damage and can be easily manipulated into a bad trade makes it a lot worse. Uh, it's a decent aggro card. I'm just going to throw in everything here with C in C tier because, yeah, I don't, I don't really know how useful this is going to be. It's also a pirate, man. <laughs> this is probably a better card than I'm giving it credit. And so we have a million sneaky cards that we got to uh, we gotta make a list of these cards and how to make a deck out of them. Stealthy Imp is cool. Uh, budget players, you can, since it's only on common, you could run this in like your pirate decks in the three if you don't have line dancing zombie. Uh, it does six damage, which is a huge amount of damage for a three cost card. It obviously then loses trades very easily if they put anything in front of it ends up not being good this deck this is probably a better card than i give it credit for because if you play this and you know it looks like a line dancing zombie they won't even front in it hits face for six they've had a lot of success with stealthy imp um i'll put in c tier <laughs> just throwing everything in c tier zombie high diver is hot trash this is such a bad card First of all, if you run more than one in a deck, this card to be good requires two lanes to not have a zombie in it. Lane one and lane five. If either of those have a zombie in it, this card is a three cost two three trash. Trash. Uh, and you forget about running more than one of these in a deck because it's... it. <laughs> so it's so that the con if all the conditions are met, it's a three cost three four amphibious, which why can't I just play this thing in the water? I don't know. I think you should be able to play this into the water. Would that be good? I think three costs three four amphibious would be good. Gravestone. Making this card able to play in the water in the meantime. Eh, it's just F tier. Don't run zombie high diver. And don't run in sports decks either. It's trash. Um, barrel roller zombie is not a great card. We've always tried to teleport this in, to control something, and then use Bad Moon Rising to utilize these two little swabbies that it makes here next door. It's m way too expensive for what it does. Uh, not great stats, and if you're looking for a deadly minion, teleport into something. Use Cosmic Imp, <laughs> or use Toxic Waste Imp, don't use Barrel or Zombie. 
Trash card, little niche uses, but not very good. Firefighter. So <laughs> we use this as a meme card. We've had a lot of success every time we've tried Firefighter Warlord. Um, but at the end of the day, popping using a four cost card. <laughs> no, guys, it's not good. The chat's going crazy, but it's not good, guys. <laughs> We've actually upgraded, I think I put this in F tier, and we've actually found some niche uses for this of cards you're popping back in. What was the really cool thing we did with Firefighter World? Yeah, you play uh, Flag Zombie. You basically Flag Storm on turn two, so Flag with Middle Manager and Genetic Experiment Teacher. Then you can play this on turn three, so three costs four or five. All of a sudden, it's kind of more interesting. And then you can pop the middle manager back in your hand and replay it next turn to be able to get more card draw. Anyway, for that reason, we're upgrading Firefighter all the way from F tier all the way up to D tier. Uh, Pogo Bouncer is one of the easiest S tier cards. You can run this in any deck. Uh, the reason I like this more than Backyard Bounce is because of the 2-2 body. This is underrated because now it's controlling two lanes for one card, which is so... Uh, good. The two damage can sometimes finish off. It can either kill a weak plant or finish off a strong plant that's taken damage. Uh, it can also, the 2-2 body uh, can just be a chum blocker for a lane while getting most of its value, which is the bounce in a different lane. Also, the fact it's a zombie means you can play mix-up Gravedigger or Encrypt and reactivate the pogo, putting it back into its gravestone. It'll pop out the next turn and make another bounce. Absolutely amazing card. You can run this in any deck. Pirate doesn't even matter. You can run Pogo in any deck. And easy S tier. Uh, Space Cowboy is another card that is going... I don't know where I put this last year, but it is going in S tier. This is so much value. Uh, if you play into a graveyard, it's amazing. Even if you don't, it's still great. Uh, this can uh, do a lot of damage, so it's a very viable finisher in any deck. I mean, the Infinity Pirates, I run Space Cowboy as a finisher. Uh, you can throw this into any sneaky deck. It's always going to get value. This is also like a good control card in a way because you play it in lane one. You know, if as long as the block meter is not going to, you know, as long as their block meter is empty, this will hit in one, move to lane two, hit there, move to lane three. So it's doing all this damage and also just blocking and absorbing damage from those lanes and killing, you know, any minion that has three attack or less, uh, three health or less in those lanes. I mean, Space Cowboy can just run any deck. Absolutely freaking amazing card. Um, Fry, please put it to the what? Tomb Razor Zombie. Uh, is you know it's very fun. If this can hit face once, uh, it's very um very good value as long as it makes something decent. Obviously, if it makes like makes like rats, it's probably still not worth it. But this can make. Uh, a, this can make a uh, six, five, six, seven cost gravestone card, which is going to be a uh, huge value. The problem is like the block meter, like this hits face and they block that turn, which turn four is a turn that they're often are blocking. If you hit them three times in the first three turns, somehow turn four, they're going to block. It's a little bit hard to pull off. It's a fun card though. Competitively, I'm going to put it in C tier and this might be also a card that is way better than I give it credit for. We've had Razor Package even building whole decks around it with Brain Freeze. You play this into a laser-based alpha or, or an Area 22, or both. Um, it's a lot of fun. Low, low stats. If they front it, it dies, though, you know? It's really, really bad stats for a four-cost card. It's also outclassed by Pogo. Uh, speaking of cards outclassed by Pogo, we got Trapper Zombie. Again, another four-cost sneaky gravestone. Uh, this is really a decent card. It's hard to find a lot of use for it, but really be able to create environments, trapper territory, which is okay willy-nilly, and just have this uh, be a presence. It's very good, um, and you can reactivate it with Mug. Again, it's hard to find room for it in decks because Pogo is so strong and such a better card. Um, Crazy the difference between Chomper, Hammer versus Back Bounce, Pogo. Also two months to go. Thank you. I, I don't have the uh, Streamlabs on the screen here. I probably should put them. I'll just read it out loud. I'll see who that was. All right, next, we are going to do Unthawed Viking. So we have had a lot of... I mean, this is a really, really fun card. If you watch the top highlights of uh, coming into 2024, top highlights of 2023. That was Super Chicken, by the way, for 22 months. Thank you so much. Ah... <sighs> So, Unthawed 
on thought viking uh you, you know teleporting this in it has to be with you giganticus playing this with any hero that does not have teleports this is so bad because it'll be a control card that only controls the turn the cards they played the turn before in order to control the cards that are played on the turn of unthought viking it has to be teleported in with the teleport or teleportation zombie so there's one hero it's good with we've had so much fun with the unthought viking though and being able to teleport this on top of little pirate cards like buried treasure which is synergy because the bottom card actually gives you value uh, or just onto any little you know pirates even onto a little monkey pirate that got value and being able to control entire fields uh, by freezing everything with unthought viking especially with crowdity that will grow then every single time you freeze something it's a lot of fun it's really really difficult this is probably might be in terms of like I would say difficulty of using it well, probably one of the absolute most difficult cards in the game, period. Um, it's always stressful, but rewarding. Um, competitively, I'm going to stick it in C tier with everything else because it's not a lot of uses for this 4 cost 4-4 four four that has 99% of the time a really bad ability, but it's cool, man. It's cool. It's a lot of fun. For fun value, I'll put it in a S tier easily, but for actual... How much should you be looking to run this index? Let's go in and see. Uh, there's nothing. Just uh, it's camouflaged. Uh, Cryo Yeti is an extremely good card. This is probably one of the cards I'll change my opinion about the most, absolutely the most, over the last two years. Uh, this is so much value for five cost, five six. You know, win a trade, either control a huge amount of damage in a different lane or. You know, free something that is uh, matched up with one of your zombies, including the Crow Yeti itself, and then their guy doesn't do damage, your guy does. It's like huge minion, win a trade. And the fact that it keeps on growing every time you freeze a plant, so if you play multiple of these, or Brain Freeze Superpower, or a gigantic ice environment, everything that freezes, this is absolutely amazing. Uh, we've, of course, turned Pogo Mug over the last couple of years into Pogo Yeti Mugs. It's definitely one of the cards I've learned from the Discord community. How absolutely freaking amazing this is. You can run this in any deck and I'm putting in S tier. In C -tier. With the pirate synergy, he should be in R. <laughs> oh, I thought that was Lazarus. Hi, Zidar. <laughs> Thank you for 62 months. <laughs> I was sure it was last. All right. Zidwa. Oh, daddy, you're so silly. Mug is, uh, was an S tier, and it's still an S tier. Absolutely freaking amazing card. It will be able to reactivate every single ability in the game, especially Pogo, which will make a bounce, or Yeti, which will make a freeze, or any ability. Even Monkey Pirate, it's so good to be able to get extra value. Plus the 5 cost 5-5. Five, five. It's on par for stats, plus being a gravestone itself, plus it'll heal every single zombie you play. It does too much for a 5 cost card. It, the huge stats, the reactivating ability, and it heals. This heals every zombie. It's popped into a gravestone, and they come out. Obviously, buffed zombies will lose their buffs, but any zombie that's taken damage will get completely healed. I mean, ridiculous. Ridiculous. You can run this in any deck. Run it even in, in pirate decks. If your swashbuckler has already increased the attack of all of your guys and you're rolling with a couple of swashbucklers, then just don't play Mix of Gravedigger. You'll win anyway. You can have them be dead in your hand at that point. Uh, but otherwise, this is just absolutely freaking amazing. I mean, come on, Mug. This has actually become worse, though, over the last couple of years because... Um, <laughs> because... Uh, I started doing Blockbuster, man. It was just something I discovered while preparing for the tournament. I, there was a lot of people running Lock In, which was their version of the Brain Freeze deck that runs Pogo Yeti Mug. And the main answer to Mug, the way you beat Mug is with Blockbuster, the Guardian four cost bullseye card that removes several graves that can remove Mug and everything else you shoved into a gravestone. You play Mug, they play Blockbuster, they win. And now uh, it's a good thing. It's a very good thing that Blockbuster has literally become meta. And uh, being able to have that card to be able to answer Mix Up Gravedigger, or worst case scenario, be a 4 cost 3 3 bullseye, which is fine. You know, it's playable. It's not dead like a like a like a gravebuster. Uh, so yep, yeah, this has this has become worse. It is so hard in a stream. You know, if you play Pogo Yeti Mug, there's gonna be a couple of games you will just lose to to Guardian decks which are the meta, and they're all running Blockbuster. So I actually want to give a shout-out to the community 
<laughs> for adapting because this was so busted and for so long and we finally did it and and we finally made uh we, you know, you're not. Popcap isn't going to nerf anything anymore. They're turning this to a three-three. There's no, there's no, there's no options for that. So us as a community, we did successfully nerf this card by running Blockbuster in every Guardian deck. So shout out to you guys. Thank you for that. Um, <laughs> we didn't make Mug Balance. It's still S tier. It's still really overpowered. But at least, at least he get, at least he can't really get away with it consistently. You know, which is great. Surprise Gargantuar is very hard to find use for because it's so outclassed by both Mixed Up Gravedigger, 5 cost Gravestone, and Yeti, also 5 cost. It's also just a huge chunk of stats. The fact you can move it to a different lane, you know, it's cool. This is actually such a good card, though. I almost wish that there weren't, you know, Yeti and Mug weren't so busted so Surprise Gar could see some play. I do suggest this for beginner players. So again, beginner players, you're... you're Budget players, you're going to be running your Headstone Carver, your Pirates, and this will be a great five-cost finisher, so to speak. You know, you can either make a good trade or go face with this. Uh, so I think this is very good for budget players who don't have all the legendaries. In terms of actual competitiveness, this would be in D, but because I think this is such an essential card for budget players, as a rare, it's going to be in C. And it's a really good card. <laughs> it's a really, this is fine. I also really like this with Neptuno when you run Gargologist on turn two and Surprise Guard. We did have success with that deck too. Walrus. I've had obviously people the whole 2023 spamming me in every stream. Probably you have to add Walrus. You have to run Walrus so bad. You know, best case scenario, it's a five cost six four Amphibious, which isn't that good for just stats. And then this, like, why not just make this five cost six four Amphibious? That wouldn't be. That wouldn't be overpower. The fact now it's three of the attack is natural and three is anti-hero, man. It's a terrible card. The fact that the imp doesn't help and the fact that the pet doesn't help. As far as I know. Walrus is going to F tier. Uh, uh, sad Walrus. Cursed Gargoyle is interesting. It's uh, very expensive for what it does at six cost. You know, like... This will be popping again Gargs into a Gravestone, mostly popping itself to a Gravestone. Every once in a while, if they don't have Grave Removal, or a guy that does 6 damage, a minion that does 6 damage, this is unstoppable, because it heals itself every turn, popping into the Gravestone. Uh, of course, everyone likes me trying to use this with Zombot. I think we tried that once, and it didn't work, because playing a 9-cost card, and then a 6-cost card, and then the 2 turns going by, it's very unlikely. <laughs> uh, we did have success using this with Gargologist, though. So. In the, because uh, it's a Garg. In the Neptuna deck. Maybe this is more useful. Maybe this, uh, what, what, what Gargs does this really synergize? What Gargs, besides for Zombot, have amazing active abilities that really are utilized from Cursed Gargolith? Maybe before the Blockbuster meta, uh, this would have been much more worth it to spend time investing and trying to figure it out. But now, it's kind of just a worst mixed up Gravedigger. So much stats, though. I love this card. I love this card, and I hope we can find a use for it. Very expensive, easily grave bustable card, but uh, we'll put it in C tier as a placeholder. Gondola is very cool. You know, it hits, you know, if you play in lane one, it hits, it usually will almost never uh, work because they're always going to put a guy in front of it. So this ability is so hard to pull off. Also, the block meter messes it up. Also, it's a six cost card. Uh, and it's not even a gravestone, so it dies to Shamrock and into every removal and Cobb Cannon and just everything that can happen to this on turn six. So very, very difficult card to pull off. Uh, if this does hit face even once, it's amazing. It's kind of just a worse Tomb Raider in a way. Uh, the fact that, you know, this can move around the board theoretically and hit a lot of lanes. I, I do want to make a deck where I'm able to control and then teleporting Gondola. The problem is that it will either be Super Brains or Giganticus, which are not very good controlling heroes. Even if you're controlling with Teleim, so all of a sudden you ran out of lanes to play your Gondola. But maybe that would work. Why don't we do teleport Teleimps into a Gondola deck? It's a meme card. We'll put it in C. It's fun. It's honestly low C, high D. It's not... This card isn't very good. It's probably worse than all the cards here. You know what? Sue me. I'm putting in high D tier. Gondola kind of sucks. Shark! Shark, ah. Shark is not like Gondola because it doesn't have to hit face to get value. It's definitely better than Gondola. You can, again, 6 cost 5-5. Five, five, it means it dies to Cobkin, it dies to Shamrock, it dies to everything efficiently. Which is so sad, like every single zombie. I don't remember where I put this last time I did the tier list a few years ago. I probably put it 
relatively higher. You can stick this at the end of a fire attack or at the end of an aggro deck, or you can try to use this with fire rooster in order to trap her territory in order to do those little bits of damage or chickening and clear a field. It's just, it really just has a problem of being a big zombie that dies to removal too easily. And competitively, it, it's very strong if you can get it going, but competitively, it's over here in C tier within everything else. It's better than Gondola, that's for sure. Zombot Stomp. It's a card we use sort of as a meme card. We like using this in Mill. Uh, I really like using this in the decks where you are freezing, teleporting in and freezing with your insteads and just stalling and then getting a big field clear. Even in those decks, it's not very good. Uh, so we're putting, <laughs> we're putting it in C tier. This can get a lot of value, but it's usually way too expensive. This could also probably be in D. High D. Low C. It's not a very good card. Is it as good as these in, D in C tier? It's honestly, in terms of how much you should be looking to run this in the deck, I'm putting it in high D. Because, uh, uh, honestly, what, what deck's actually, unironically, unironically runs Zombot Stop? As a meme, it, it's a, if a meme, if this was a meme tier list, it would be an S. But competitively, it's a definitely in D tier. <laughs> you don't run Zombot Stop. It's too expensive. It's too, way too expensive. All right, and the last... The last card is Zombot Plankwalker. Uh, so this is a decent finisher. You know, it puts a huge minion in one lane and then is able to, like... It doesn't have the problem that most big zombies have. Because most big zombies, first of all, can get chump block. This can't have strike through. Second of all, if, they, if this dies to a Shamrocket, you still have value on the board. Every once in a while, this will be insane and leave a Garg launching Garg and a... Um, you know, a intergalactic warlord or something, you know, really good, a gondola. It'll be leaving a lot of other value on the board. You can use this as a finisher. I'm usually, usually finding that this is actually outclassed in most decks by laser base alpha or by going viral or by, uh, or by area 22, like a cheaper sort of finisher that activates your yetis and activates your mugs. Uh, you know, there was a Discord deck everyone was running, Plank Control, they called it, and I sort of adapted a similar deck that did not run Plank Walker as a finisher, instead it just ran going viral, uh, in order to give your guys, your big your big chunky guys, they're a lot cheaper, that happened three costs, three turns earlier, uh, it'll be giving them uh, Frenzy, which I found was better, but again, controlling for Plank Walker is viable, we like doing the thing where we control for this, and then leap it into a Zomba, which is very fun. <sighs> I used to think this would be just an S tier, you know, if you would ask me back. Probably last time, I don't I don't remember where I put it. This is exp but this is better than almost every other dry zombie that costs five or more. This is the best of all those guys, this is probably the best one. However, however, it's still not that good because most of the it's unreliable. The other two guys that can make especially when I play it, it's just a Swabby and a Monkus Pirate. And then it still does die very badly, the Shamrocket and Cop Cannon. It's not as bad, but it's still pretty terrible. Is controlling for Plankwalker a good idea? It's fine. Can you run this as a couple of copies, as a two of, in your Pogo Yeti mugs as a finisher? Is that a good idea? Yes, because those decks sometimes can get slowed down. If you get Blockbuster, run away to win. And maybe that's even a really good idea. Maybe in order to deal with Blockbuster, I need to be running this in my Pogietti Monks. Can you run this as a two of, as a finisher in a Pyrodex? In case they have all of their heals and all their stuff and all their Grave Busters, they will slow down your Pirates. Is running two of these a decent idea? It could be. I'm going to do the ultimate compromise and put it in A tier because I think there are a lot of uses. I think this is a very legitimate finisher. And... Uh, Maybe also as a placeholder, and maybe I'm really going to actually do that sort of mindset. Have decent early game control, Pogo Yeti Mug, and then just run two Plank Walkers. By the time you're done playing your Yeti on turn 5, your Mug on turn 6, all of a sudden, you're just a turn or two away from being able to play a Plank Walker. I think this is a card I have to sort of re-imagine. You know what I mean? Like, maybe you need to be running this in a deck with Cryo Brains. You tell imps, cryo brains, and run plank walker as a finisher. It's such a good independent, so much value. You know, instead of teleport, blob, bonus attack, just teleport plank walker. It does almost just as much, you know? All right. 
We'll leave it in A tier. Anyway, guys, that was the sneaky tier list. Let me know civilly down in the comment section below what you agree with and what you don't agree with. Uh, that, again, was the final video for the classes. I will do the heroes next. So you guys have been waiting very patiently for me to redo the hero tier list. So that will be next uh, on the tier list series. I will see you in the next one. Have a happy new year. Peace. This is Fry.